you don't manhandle this car. It's just, it becomes an extension of you and it's almost like osmosis. You just think about where you want to put the car and it's there. I'm Marino Franchitti and today I'm driving Nick Mason's 1959 Tipo T61 Maserati, better known as the Birdcage. My first memory of a car is my father had a guard red 1980 911 Turbo four speed, tan interior. I remember standing with my brother, I was tiny, I remember because the car seemed so big and it reversing out of the garage at my mum and dad's old house and sitting there warming up. And that's my first conscious memory of a car. The racing track's the place that I feel most at home because I've been there my whole life and it was, being around that, the natural thing is you want to get in and have a go. It's fun watching, but you want to try. And as a family, financially, we didn't have the money for both of us to do karting to a proper level. But no matter how much I even tried to convince myself I wanted to do something else, all I wanted to do was go racing. And there's, there's a lot of hard times in racing when you're a racing driver, but getting behind the wheel of the car Putting that visor down, that peacefulness and that enjoyment that you get from driving these cars is, is what it's all about. That's what everything else leads towards. <laughs> it's been two years, it's great to be back behind the wheel of this thing. Can't wait to get it on track. I'll tell you one thing, the guy that road registered this car was onto something. We've got to do that again. So this car here was the final car of the first six bird cages that were produced. It was finished very late in 1959, 28th of December actually, and delivered like all of the first six cars to North America to a private owner. Maserati, they'd won Formula One World Championship in 57 with Fangio with the famous 250F Maserati. But they were in financial dire straits. It was in better financial form when they started to produce this car. But its main stipulation was that it had to be cheap to build and it had to be something that privateers could run. Giulio Alfieri, the chief engineer and designer at Maserati that designed this car. He was a genius to, to do what he did with this. At the time, monocoques were the coming technology, but it was still in its infancy and it was still very expensive. And he didn't have the money, or Maserati didn't have the money to make a monocoque. So he used the tube frame technology of the time to make a tube frame monocoque almost. So there's 200 tubes in this car of varying size from 15 to 10 millimeters. They're all triangulated, reinforced in the point of uh, most stress. And that is what created that famous birdcage shape. So the first person to test this car was Sterling Moss. Uh, it was actually T60 was the first car he drove. And within five laps, he said, this is just an incredible car. But you should think about a three liter engine so that you can go for the World Sports Car Championship. They then went and tested it at the Nürburgring and on its first outing, it broke a lap record at the Nürburgring. So the orders started coming in. Again, the first car they produced was the T60, the two and a half liter car. But the Americans wanted the three liter engine as well. And Alfieri had seen this coming, so he'd already been producing 
a three litre engine for this. The car raced for the first time in Rouen in 1959 with Sterling Moss at the wheel and it, it decimated the competition. It won handsomely. It's an interesting car. I remember watching Nick driving this car at Silverstone and I'd, I was aware of the car but it wasn't something I thought oh yeah I really want to go and drive that and I got in the car and it, it was instantly like an extension of me. It's so light, the steering. It reacts to every small input. For its time, the brakes in the car, it's got 14 inch front discs, which are massive for the time. Now for a 1959 car, this thing breaks like a modern car. Never runs out of brakes. It's just incredible. It's a true prototype. Everything is just so optimized. And it just does everything that you want. And this car has a gearbox that is better than any car I've driven, I think. Every time you go for a gear, it's just there. It's so fast, it's like a knife through butter. It's perfection. And it's just the, the function of the car, purely there for speed. But the form that comes from that is just incredible. It's just so beautiful. It's so purposeful. You get into the car, even when you're driving it, you feel the bars through the seat. Everything is so thin, so light. Yeah, it takes so much abuse and it's such a killer car, it's so fast. The base of the engine is from the 200SI Maserati. Now what he did with the engine is it's on a 45 degree angle, which makes it so low on the front. It's three litres, about 250 horsepower at 6,800 RPM. For its time, again, this tiny flywheel. It's such a reactive engine, it revs so freely. It always starts on the button and you really have to have your wits about you though with this because if you run this car too hard when the engine's cold and it just blows pipes off the engine. And I'll never forget, you, your hand naturally covers the oil pressure. But when you've got it just in the right position of yaw, you, you can actually see and I'll never forget that. You're, you're driving this thing like Goodwood. You've got four wheel drift on you using every single piece of the track. You're thinking about where the car is going to end up. You're looking at the rev counter, make sure you're not over revving it. And you're also checking that the oil pressure is staying true as you're doing it. It's, it's such an involving process driving this car, which is another part of the genius of it, I think, is, is the mental capacity that it takes to, to manage all of that alongside handling this, this incredible car. I think if you spoke to Nick about his cars, obviously the, the GTO is the headline car and the one that everyone talks about, the most valuable one. But if you asked him about racing, the cars and his favourite one, I think the birdcage would be the one. I mean, in his T60, he, ha he had two at one point. He had the T60 and the T61. And in the T60, he won at Silverstone in 1993 uh, at the Grand Prix in a support race. You know, last lap pass round the outside, and I think that's his his favourite memory of racing. And this is a man that's done Le Mans five times. I feel really privileged that he allows me to drive this car. I don't take it for granted and, and it's just an absolute honour and privilege to drive this thing.